Virginia, and today I'm going to be talking about medicating ADD and ADHD in children. We may overdiagnose, we may overtreat, some may turn to drugs to help improve performance without diagnosis. We are not always clear on what is normal versus abnormal. Attention deficit disorder is a rising common debatable topic. Considering all of us have gotten to a point in our lives where we are in a collegiate institution, I'm sure you've all been around students that are developing that have relied on medication as an attempt to fix their attention deficit disorder. Medicating ADD or ADHD in children hinders them from reaching their full potential as an individual. I will address the following common arguments that support medicating these mental conditions. Medication helps students academically. It helps ADHD children with behavior issues and medication has more benefit than harm when it comes to ADHD and ADD. So first off, a lot, of, a lot of people think that medicating ADHD is the only way to help students perform better academically. ADHD and ADD are disorders that make it difficult for children to excel in academic settings. Pharmaceutical treatment is a method that is commonly, that is commonly used to allow children to focus in those sort of settings and learning situations. A journal on sociology states that arguments over the strength of scientific understandings of the disorder will not resolve the question over which institutions are responsible for identifying and treating ADHD. Is it the family, the school, the physician, or a combination thereof? So while pharmaceutical treatment may be a single method for helping a student with ADD or ADHD, there are other methods. A family plays a part in supporting psych the psychological needs of a child through facilitating learning at home at, the, at a child's pace, encouraging a student to focus over small amounts of time for, um, rather than extended periods of time um, and helping them learn kinesthetically and hands-on. Schools have a similar role. They should allow children to take break breaks frequently throughout the day um, and then provide hands-on activity to facilitate learning in a way that keeps a kid engaged with something to do. Medication will also help students with behavior issues. That's the next topic that I'll talk about. So similar to the academic argument, medication doesn't help behavior, or medication can help behavior issues that are present with ADHD. This comes at the cost of a child's development into a young adult. In Psychiatric Times, Wagner states that parents' main concern with medicating their child would change their child's personality. Some parents wanted to defer medication treatment until non-pharmaceutical um, attempts have been tried, such as behavior modification and, and nutrition therapy. It's imperative for a child to develop in an environment that allows them to explore the world around them through creativity. This is how a child's personality develops. Medication shuts down much of their personal interests through creativity whenever um, they're on these medications. So uh, this is where behavior modification through redirection can come in. Parents, educators, and other youth professionals should work with students to seek methods to engage them in teaching the correct and desired behaviors rather than using medication as an easy out. We should address helping the student overcome their diagnosis rather than pushing it aside with medication. Lastly, um, a lot of people think that medicating students with ADD and ADHD has more benefit than harm. Um, the American Journal of Bioethics states that the moral imperative of Ritalin becomes increasingly problematic when such use doesn't merely alter behavior in the present, but it impacts the future cognition, including the ability to generate creative thought. Furthermore, a journal from Brown University states that these medications create a loss of appetite, growth delay, cardiovascular risks, sleep disturbance, tics, substance abuse, misuse, seizures, suicidal thoughts and behaviors, and psychiatric symptoms, and many more. The value that a parent, a, the value a parent has in their child is immeasurable. These risks that are taken are not worth it when there are other methods that can allow students to become successful that have ADD and ADHD. The arguments discussed are true, but are not the best option when it comes to positive development of our youth. When you have children, or if you're working towards being an educator, examine all sides of the spectrum when it comes to addressing children with learning disabilities. The easiest way is not always the best way when it comes to our most precious resources. 